Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. Hey, you can get some amazing deals on brand new entry-level saxes on Amazon these days, but should you get a potentially superior sax second-hand for the same money? This week, I'll be sharing my experience to try and help you answer that question. First of all, let me say that this isn't a review video of the Yamaha YTS23 or a review of the cheapest saxophone on Amazon. There's a link in the description to a great review of the Yamaha YTS23, and you can go to Better Sax and other channels to get great reviews of cheap saxes from Amazon. What I'm doing here is sharing my experience to help you decide if you should buy brand new or better quality second hand for an entry level sax. Make sure you watch to the end of this video because I'm going to back to back my secondhand Yamaha with my Selma Mark VI so you can compare the two for yourself. Just before we dive in, if you haven't already checked it out, be sure to go and check out my one hour saxophone success masterclass. This is an awesome free lesson with me covering a whole load of stuff that will help you take your sax playing to the next level, whatever sax you've got. Just use the card linked above the URL below or click the link in the description. Usually, in non-COVID times that is, I play in the house band at the Ritz Hotel in London every week. The monotony of doing a regular gig can sometimes weigh you down after a while, so I try and make my residencies as hassle-free as possible. And the easiest way of cutting down on gig hassle is to have everything you need at the gig already, so that traveling is as effortless as possible. For this reason, I decided to get myself a second horn and keep it locked up at the gig. Inspired by Nigel McGill's video where he buys himself a second-hand Yamaha YAS23 Alto, I decided to do exactly the same thing. Although I've no intention of painting it with zebra stripes at this point. <laughs> my current Barry is a YBS32. My first tenor was a YTS23. And I've also got a spare YAS23 Alto. So I've got first hand experience that these early Yamaha student models are great horns. Check out any review and you'll find exactly the same thing. The Japanese built Yamaha YTS23 punches way above its weight for a so called student horn. And it's a great investment that will hold its value. Also, if it did get stolen at the venue, it's not an irreplaceable horn. They're pretty ubiquitous on the secondhand market. So that's the first point here. Make sure you know what secondhand horn you're looking for before you go looking for it. If you want a great secondhand horn and you're anything from a beginner in sax to an intermediate or even above, then you can't go far wrong with a Yami 23. Remember, I've got a Selma Mark VI and I'm more than happy to play a YTS 23 every week in its place. <laughs> if you've got a Yamaha 23 or if you've just bought a secondhand sax, I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments below. Once you know what you're after, the ideal situation is to be able to visit the store or seller and play the sax. There's really no substitute for that. You can check that all the low notes come out easily, the intonation is okay, there's no big dents, etc., and the condition of the instrument is as advertised. I didn't have that luxury with COVID and whatnot, so I looked on eBay. If you're buying from eBay, have a close look at all the photos for obvious damage and request extra photos from the seller if need be. You also need to factor in a repair bill from your technician as you have no real clue what state your sex is gonna be in. Yamaha YTS 23s go from about 500 pounds to 1,000 pounds on the second-hand market. So I was pretty stoked to find mine for only 400 pounds. Another bonus was that I got a great SBS shaped case for an extra 20 pounds. See, because the case alone would have been about 150 pounds or so, I thought that was a pretty good deal. I wouldn't recommend getting a sax shipped from another country as it could get totally trashed. I wouldn't even re recommend getting it posted at all, to be honest. In the end, my seller came and met me to hand it over in person. Of course, there's plenty of other selling sites that you can search on, but they're all much of a muchness, and I doubt you'll get a refund or return from any of them on a secondhand sax. A better option might be to buy from a music store. Hopefully, they'll have given the instrument a service and it should be in good playing order already you'll have a chance to play it, and with any luck, you'll get better customer service after the sale if anything bad happens. Sadly, I kind of flopped with my purchase, which is good for this video, because you're getting the worst case scenario here. Most likely, your eBay purchase will be much more positive than this. First of all, I gave the whole instrument a really good clean down with antiseptic wipes, and obviously didn't play the mouthpiece that came with it. 
When I tried to play the horn with my mouthpiece, I couldn't get anything out of it below a G. Nothing. <laughs> I actually filmed myself attempting to play the horn in its original condition. But due to a technical error, I've lost that footage. <laughs> anyway, I can tell you that it was pretty difficult to get any notes out and impossible to get anything at all low down. The G sharp spring was also broken. Not great. <laughs> However, I always knew I was going to have to get it looked at by my repairman and I was hoping that it would be quite easy to rectify. You should also budget a full overhaul into your price if you're going to buy off eBay, then you won't be stressed out with the state of the horn when it arrives. You can see the condition of your sax as a first draft. Call it work in progress. I took my sax to Jeff Collins in Chelmsford, my repair guy, and here's his first impressions along with a few other comments about these Yamaha 23s. Apologies for the slightly scuffy iPhone footage. Okay, this is Jeff Collins, my repair guy. This is a first impression of the uh, Yamaha 23. Got the old leak light in there. I don't think you can get the angle there, but can you see all the light shining out the back of the, the hole of the apple stack there? I don't know if it will show up on camera, but I can see it with the naked eye. Yeah, all this leakage up here is most likely to be what's causing the no low note problem. Yeah, right. First impressions, I'm thinking about half the pads need replacing. Yeah, I mean, standard thing with any second hand one, almost always the trill keys we have gone. Your low D sharp almost always needs replacing because that's when it's sitting in the horn. That's where all the, all the moisture collects. Yeah, sure. And rots, rots the pad away. So I think what I'm looking at here is probably replacing everything from G sharp upwards. A lot of what they did with this was based on Mark VI designs. When you say it was based on a Mark VI in terms of what? the uh... Uh, the, the the layout of the keys, right. um, the uh, the weight of the brass that was used. I can see a bend there on the low B flat. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. The downside on these, just for reference, is the octave mechanism, which is old old school. Right. What do you uh, mean by old school? It, it's it's closer to a 1930s design, so it's it's not as nicely balanced as a modern horn. I tend to get out of adjustment more more readily. Things I tend to look for on on this sort of vintage is. Often these key guards have been bashed, which is generally a sign of uh, lack of care and attention. Yeah. Uh, another thing that can happen, although these are more solid than the later versions, um, you can get the whole of the bell section shunted out of line. Right. And these Yamahas are, are pretty much unique in that that joint there between the body and the bow is just a glued joint. All right, it's not soldered. No, it's aerodite. Oh, really? Uh, and if that takes a knock, that joint breaks. Ah. Um, and the only thing that then holds it in place is, is that key guard. Oh, yeah. uh, and you can have massive leaks right, right. around your, your D and D sharp. Gotcha. Whereas almost everyone else has you know, the, the, the big clamp with the screws on it. It didn't seem too bad on first impression, but when he got it onto the bench, things got worse. As you can see from the photos here, one of the posts had lit literally been fixed on with something that looked like Meccano and two holes had been drilled through the body of the sax. Jeff said it was the worst bodge repair job he'd ever seen in his whole career. <laughs> Elsewhere, every pad on the left hand had to be replaced, as well as many other pads on the right hand and various other regulation issues. All in all, I had to spend £230 to get it in good shape, and that was cheap for the amount of work that was done. Now my sax have gone up to 650 quid. The moral of the story, Make sure you've allowed headroom on your budget to get any problems ironed out if you're buying from eBay, as you just don't know what you're going to get. If it's any consolation, I think I already bought the worst YTS-23 in the world, so you might be alright. So far, so bad, but now that I've got my sax in perfect working order and I'm £650 to the good, how does it actually perform? The simple answer is pretty bloody well, actually. Is it as good as my Mark VI? No, and you wouldn't expect it to be either. You can hear for yourself in a sec, but considering the Yamaha is something like 10 times cheaper than my Mark VI, there's no way it's 10 times worse. I'll now play my YTS-23 back to back with my Selma Mark VI, and you can hear for yourself. Let me know in the comments if you can tell a big difference or not. I won't mess with the EQ levels or anything else, so it's a straight comparison. I'll be using the same vintage 8-star Florida Link and 3.5 Java Redbox reads for both. I'm going to play a bit of Hank Mobley's solo from the B-flat blues, smoking off his 1962 workout album. <laughs> Thank you. 
So should you buy secondhand sax? My answer to that is maybe. If this is your first saxophone, I would recommend getting a brand new shiny one from Amazon. Although even then, I'd still recommend you find a repair tech to look it over in case it was damaged in transit or anything. However, if you're a bit more experienced or if you want to take a gamble and you're willing to spend a bit on repairs, you can get a much better horn for the same money. I've played a new Yamaha 62 tenor and there's not that much difference between that and my second hand YTS 23. But a brand new Yamaha 62 is between 2000 pounds and 2500 pounds, more than three times the price. Also, this isn't a discussion about buying a classic vintage horn like a Mark VI or a Con, although I guess the theory is the same. The thing you need to understand about saxes is that they don't really wear out that much. As long as you don't mind missing out on that new sax experience, a fully serviced second-hand version of the same model will be equally as good as a new one. Anyway, I'm over the moon with my new spare tenor, although ironically, thanks to COVID, I haven't even got the gig I bought it for anymore. <laughs> so that's it for this Sunday. I hope my experience of buying a second-hand sax was of some use to you, and hopefully you can get yourself a great bargain now. If you want to learn some more in-depth sax stuff, go to getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass to get your free one-hour lesson with me. Thank you so much for watching and an even bigger thank you if you've bought me a coffee recently. You can do this using the link in the description. If you're enjoying the content, please give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content and check out my Insta and Facebook pages. Don't forget to check out last week's fantastic live Ombudsman Masterclass. And until next Sunday, practice smart and enjoy your music. See you later. Okay.